it is very intense your life is gonna kind of have to stop for a moment or breaks you take the less inclined you're gonna be to finish so like i said god works in mysterious ways um like a chit chat video while i do my makeup i'm getting ready to go out to a show i'm actually going to a candlelight concert in manhattan so so i'm just gonna do my makeup but i decided i'm gonna do like a little chit chat about my dental hygiene journey so um during the pandemic i did go back to school for dental hygiene um but just for a background i did have a long history in the dental field um i started really in high school um so i live in new york i live in brooklyn and i went to uh clara barton high school so those of you who may not be from new york um clara barton is a high school in brooklyn it's in um crown heights um and they are a vocational high school um that offer students opportunities in the healthcare field so when you get to your junior year in high school you are able to opt in to a healthcare program so they have um a few different things to choose from i don't know if it's the same but when i was there they had a few different things to choose from they had uh medical careers so you could do medical assisting um they also had an lpm program which was really dope i think um a lot of my classmates did the lpm program and they're now rns um and then aside from medical they've had dental so they had dental technician and then um dental assistant and then there was also vision um so i i don't know i never really had the desire not at that age at least to be a nurse um so i did want to do a program but i just knew it wasn't going to be nursing for me so i was like let me just try dental um so then by the time you graduate you actually are a certified dental assistant after you go through the program there's um lectures and then there's a certain amount of clinical hours you had to um complete in order to be certified and this is like a state accredited program so it's like real deal stuff and it's free a lot of people pay for this type of stuff pay for this type of training so i think it's really dope that the school offers it for free to students um you know hopefully that's something that's going to be around for a long time if any of you have children that are like high school age or getting ready to go to high school and you live in the new york city area definitely look into it i feel like it was a really good opportunity to meet for me to graduate high school and come out already making money I was a dental assistant for years like years 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 almost 10 years i worked um off and on as an assistant um and i was making pretty good money straight out of high school like for back then to be making 15 dollars an hour when the minimum wage was probably only like seven dollars was good to me to be that young um so i worked at a, a bunch of different offices i worked with a periodontist in bay ridge um i worked at like clinic setups i worked at private practice in manhattan um so just bounced around a little bit for every few years now initially i was in college i wanted to go to dental school was my was my end goal um so i started off at hunter college i was doing like pre-med biology all that stuff um and you know i don't know if it was just me being home in new york with all my friends i just really wasn't taking it seriously i was first of all trying to work and go to school which was like ridiculous um and then i got to a point where you know working and making money and hanging out with my friends was just more important to me at the time than than um school so i ended up taking a leave from school for a few years and i just worked full time um which is the biggest mistake like if you decide you want to do something just go through with it like all at once the more breaks you take the less inclined you're going to be to finish so definitely don't recommend and over time you know years was passing by i wasn't really paying it any mind um but i knew that eventually i wanted to go back to school so i want to say i took maybe like three years off total before i went back to school full time um and at this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a dentist anymore. So I was like, you know what? Let me just try for hygiene. A lot of the offices that I would work in, um, the dentists would 
encouraged me to go to school for hygiene it's only a two-year program it's not like a huge time commitment in the grand scheme of things so i said okay let me try hygiene um so i ended up going to another community college in brooklyn um it's not a community college it's a cuny i'm sorry um a cuny college in brooklyn called city tech um they're one of the only few cuny schools that do offer the program um, so I started taking prerequisites there, but I was having so many issues with financial aid. Like, it seemed like every semester it was something. And then it got to the point my mom was so fed up because I was still a dependent at this age um, of having to just run through hoops with her taxes and whatnot. It was always some issue. Um, so the thing about the CUNY programs with dental hygiene, and it's probably the same way for nursing and anything else, to be honest, it's very competitive um, a lot of these programs only take about 60 students a year or a semester and there's hundreds of thousands of kids within the cuny system and probably thousands of people applying every semester so your grades have to be at the tip top like your best bet for getting into these programs is honestly having like a 4-0 um so so i was taking my prerequisites this this and that um at first my grades weren't really the strongest um a lot of these classes are really hard like you have to take like organic chemistry anatomy is very science heavy um so i didn't feel at the time initially that my grades were going to be good enough to get into the program and when i started to speak with advisors they pretty much told me the same thing like you're gonna have to have better grades because you're gonna end up just being on the wait list basically um, so I ended up retaking a few of these classes. Um, I didn't get in that first year I applied. And then the second year I applied, I was put on a wait list. Um, and right before the fall semester started that year, um, they called me, well, they emailed me. They contacted me and told me that a spot had opened up and they were, you know, offering me the seat basically. <laughs> so come to find out, I go to accept the offer and the school is like, oh no, sweetie, you have like a pass through balance. Like, you have to pay that first mind you it's like thousands of dollars from classes that i dropped that they were still trying to make me pay for which was stupid um so i'm like this must be like a misunderstanding financial aid was so not helpful they just really was not trying to help me do anything about it they just like well, well yeah you have to pay it sorry so long story short i couldn't come up with the money in time school was starting like in a few weeks so i ended up having to forfeit my seat basically um, now this bill that I owed ended up being an ongoing thing with um, City Tech for years like to the point where I had to get escalated to the general council of the City University of New York like way above the school's pay grade um, which it ended up getting rectified over after a few years thank God because you know I just felt it was really unfair that I had missed my opportunity to get into this program messing with the school. And by the time it was all resolved, I just really didn't even want to go back to the school because it just left such a bad taste in my mouth that I ended up saying, you know, if I'm going to do dental hygiene, I'm going to have to find somewhere else to go. So, um, so I took some time off again. I ended up picking up a job working for an Alina company and, um, I was there and that itch to, to join the program again came to me. So I was like, dang, let me think fast. Like what's a school that i can get into really quickly where i don't have to worry about it being as competitive so um i looked into nyu i i really would have loved to go to nyu but you know god works in mysterious ways everything happens for a reason this was in 2019 um i got into nyu actually and um it was just way too expensive <laughs> to be honest it was so expensive it was coming out to be like 60 grand a year and the program is two years um so i really just couldn't afford it i couldn't even get a personal loan anything that was going to cover a fraction of that so um so unfortunately i had to sit out that year again but like i said god works in mysterious ways because a few months later early into 2020 i got laid off from my job and then a, sh a few weeks after um the pandemic everything shut down so you know, like I said, God works in mysterious ways. Um, I had just enrolled into Hostos right before the pandemic for the spring semester of 2020. So I was taking prerequisites again because at this point my CUNY credits had expired or whatever they say. I had to take the science classes over. Um, 
so yeah so by the grace of god i was able to do my prerequisites at home remote which helped me tremendously because i just feel like it was so much easier um and i got into the program at house though finally <laughs> finally after taking my prerequisites again i got into the program and you know that was pretty much it um so as far as the program goes if anyone's considering it it is very intense your life is gonna kind of have to stop for a moment um if you can work and you have the support system to work um if you have like kids and, and things like that great um i didn't work for like the first year until i was like dead broke and i didn't have a choice um but if you had the option to like not work while you're in the program please take advantage because it's it's so stressful it is so stressful it made the experience just so much harder um there was times where i felt like i was i should be studying and i wasn't because i was on my way to work i tried to get study time in wherever i could like i would read on the train on my way to work any days off i had from work i was doing homework and studying so i pretty much had like no social life um <laughs> that was it for like two years yeah everything else kind of had to just take a back seat but i knew that like for me, this was my last chance to really see it through and I wanted to, to give it my all, so I just sacrificed. Uh, I took a job in a restaurant. I have no restaurant experience. Took a job in a restaurant just because that was the only thing I could find that would work around my schedule with the school because you're in classes Monday through Friday. It's like a block program. Like, There's no pick your schedule. Like, That's it. And only some schools offer night classes, which my school didn't. Um, so yeah. <laughs> It was either you're gonna take these classes at this time on these days or you're not gonna be in it so so that was that um but yeah it was overall now that I'm finished with everything I could say it was like a really good experience and I was able to see you know how things pan out when you really just bet on yourself and you and you just stay down and focus and see things through um, so being on the other side is like a blessing but I was stressed <laughs> during I was a, a nervous wreck all the time just way too much going on trying to manage everything trying to juggle all the classes all the studying all the memorization and then not even to mention the clinic the clinical hours was crazy that's a whole nother whole nother thing so <laughs> so yeah it was it was really it was a good experience I'm glad that I did it and you know um now that i'm working in the field it, it's really rewarding like i had a patient today i had a patient today who was just really like appreciative of the service i was providing because we are healthcare providers um some people don't even know what a dental hygienist is still like in 2024 which is crazy <laughs> they call us like technicians they call us nurses like I, I hear everything at work so it's just funny to me but um yeah so it's really rewarding he was really like appreciative of you know the service i provided for him he was just like you're, you're really good at your job so that made me feel good you know um for people who may be interested in getting into it i've been seeing like a lot of videos and stuff on tiktok just like hygiene tiktok rbh tiktok um this is not one of those things you do just because you want to make money trust me like you have to have at the core of it like a want to help people it is essentially like a customer facing role um if you're looking for something just to make money like trust me there's so many other things that you can do to make money that don't require as much effort as this does because <laughs> it is really it can be a lot it can be a lot you're talking to people all day you're essentially educating um and you have to provide a service to people um so it's not something you should do if you're not interested in like serving people or serving the community in some way because that's essentially what the job is very similar to nursing in that way so like i said don't come into it just thinking like oh i'm gonna make a whole bunch of money yes you can make good money but it's not one of the ones it's not one of the ones if you're just looking for something quick easy to make money do something else trust me <laughs> And don't get me wrong i love the job but that's because i like it i've liked it since i've been in the field i didn't like it because i thought i was gonna make a whole bunch of money it just made sense for me um so i just followed my heart and what god put on my heart to do and i just zoomed through um so 
I graduated in June of 2023, so it's been almost a year. Now, once you finish the program and you graduate, you still have to pass your licensing exam. So it's very similar to um, nursing in that way. Um, there's two exams you have to take. Um, there's a clinical exam, and then there's a written exam. So the clinical exam we had taken um, while we were still in school, we took it during our spring break of senior semester. The spring, I actually failed my clinical exam the first time. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Um, we were using mannequins and I just wasn't used to, you know, the way the calculus felt, everything about it just was like not like working on a live patient. Um, to some people, they said it was easier. I didn't think it was easier. Um, it was harder to me and I failed by like a few points. I was devastated. Like I remember being at work and I should have never looked at my test results at work. They came through and I was just so anxious to find out. I had to look, ruined my whole day. My shift, that was the worst shift I ever worked in my life. I wanted to just run out and go home and cry. Like I couldn't, I had to stay the whole night. And you know what, I, like I spent a day like feeling sorry for myself, but then I just signed up to take the test as soon as possible again. And I ended up passing like less than a month later, so. So yeah, um, so if you fail any of your exams, don't feel bad. Um, there's people that I graduated with that had to take the board exam multiple times. They make these tests to be hard. They're not easy to pass. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you don't pass the first time. Don't tell yourself, you know, you're not good enough to do it or you don't have what it takes. You know, it's just test taking is different for everybody. So um, don't let that be a measure of your abilities um, at all. So luckily I did pass it the first time. Um, but I really just was in a place where I just was so ready to leave the restaurant. I was like, I cannot work here anymore. <laughs> like, I don't have a choice. Like, I have to pass this test because I'm at my wit's end. I was like running myself ragged, still broke, running crazy, working at this job I hated that I had no passion for. I was like, I have to get out of here. So for me, it was like do or die type type stuff. So. <laughs> So I made it happen and yeah, so I, the thing about hygiene, once you get out of school, you're gonna have your choice of jobs, especially if you're in a market like New York City, like literally as soon as, before I even was licensed, before I even graduated, I had people reaching out to me telling me, let me know when you get your license, like they were ready to hire, they're always ready to hire because the demand for the job in the New York City market especially is really high um there's like a class of hygienists retiring every year right and then there's not enough people to replace them so so you know that's the good thing about being here the the job market is really well um really good so you're gonna have your pick of jobs um but it's about finding an office that you're happy an environment that you're happy working in because it's gonna be a big chunk of your life um, now I'm not the type of person where like I make it my whole life like it's definitely not my whole life I have so many interests and things going for myself outside of it but you're gonna spend a good time a good portion of your time doing it so you have to find a work home that you're really comfortable in and don't be afraid to advocate for yourself if you want a certain pay if you want a certain schedule if you want certain instruments to work with if you want you know speak up for yourself you know and if you're not in an office where you feel like you could do that and you don't feel supported then you know that's not the place for you um i have a pretty good job situation right now like i'm pretty happy with where i'm at um i know i'm not gonna stay there forever but it's it's working for me it's convenient and that's my biggest thing right now is just everything has to make sense and for me so you know so yeah i'm <laughs> glad that I did it. My story was like chaotic, not an overnight story whatsoever, but it's mine. And you know, I, I'm grateful for it. And I think that if it had been easy for me, I wouldn't appreciate it as much as I do. Um, so I just appreciate it so much more because I had to literally fight to the nail for it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's my story. Um, I'm gonna finish getting ready though. I kind of have to go and then I'll show you guys um, the finished look. <laughs> so one other thing I didn't touch on is clinic. Um, now, I don't know what they do in the other schools 
okay, but CUNY, you on your own. Like, ain't no patience for you. Like, you got to get out there and get your own patience. Like, and it's not easy to get patients to sit for these clinic sessions. They're so long. It's everything is like a hassle. Like there's all this paperwork you have to do. You have to wait for your instructors, your instructors to come around before you can do stuff, especially that first year. It's like they baby you so much, but it's because they want you to go through the process properly. And you know, we used to give our instructors a lot of flack. Like <laughs> We complained about them every turn, but now that I'm done, I can see that, you know, they really just were trying to set us up for a success, which I appreciate. But man, being in clinic, it was like the ghetto, okay? I remember being outside in the Bronx on Grand Concourse, stopping people on the street, asking them if they could come sit as my patient, like literally grabbing people off the street. And then they wouldn't even come back, so it didn't even count, like... It was to the point where I was gonna start paying people just to come because I lived so far away in Brooklyn. There was not many people that was willing to come all the way up to the Bronx just to be my patient. I have to come multiple times outside of like my family members. So, but you know, luckily we got it done. Um, my classmates and I helped each other as much as we could. Like if we had extra patients, we would like pass them off to whoever needed them. And um, by <laughs> I literally made it through that last semester of clinic by the skin of my teeth. Like I was working up until probably like one of the last days of clinic. Um, so many people flopped on me. Like they would just stop coming, stop answering me. Like I was so down horrendously. I never want to be that down bad again. Like that was, I was humiliated. Like I would wake up in the middle of the night scared that like my patient was about to cancel on me like two in the morning and I had to be up at five like it was bad for me it was bad for me mm -hmm. yeah. so, <laughs> so hopefully that's not you guys experiences I know some private schools do um help provide patients for the the students like NYU but you know for that cause I just cannot justify it I just had to get mine out the mud <laughs> but yeah clinic can be really hard so if you know you want to go into the program, start trying to identify your patients early on. Lean on your family and friends to come in and support you because they are probably going to be the ones that's most likely to show up, to be honest. Pick them up, drop them off if you have to. Do what you got to do. Just make sure they're in that chair and that they come for the whole entire process. And so you make sure you get your credit for that because that, that stress, I don't wish that on nobody. Okay. Um, but yeah. So yeah that's my story um it's so much stuff i didn't touch on here so you know if anyone has any questions in particular about anything just drop them down and i'll try to answer as best i can um any help of like current students like if you're looking for study resources or just some tips or pointers let me know i'll be happy to answer um but yeah that's my my dental hygiene story so I don't know. I don't know if I want to do lashes today. I'm just like not in the mood for lashes sometimes. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna just do eyeliner today. I just don't be feeling like putting lashes on anymore. I don't know what that's about. But yeah, I'm gonna finish my makeup and then I'll show y'all what it looks like when I'm dressed my look for the night honey